From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Afternoon Edition. Right now on the Afternoon Edition, bracing for heavy rain, Hurricane Hillary is making its way up the Pacific. A tropical storm watch has been issued along parts of the California coast. Good afternoon, I'm Elizabeth Cook. Right now, California is watching as Hurricane Hillary fast approaches and it could reach Southern California tomorrow. A tropical storm has not hit California since 1939. This is huge news. Let's get to First Alert meteorologist Jessica Birch with more on where the storm is now, Jess. Absolutely, and like you said, this is huge when it comes to the fact that we haven't seen one since 1939. I will say this too, that was just a tropical storm. Right now, this track is expected to hit California at a category one, so let's take a quick look at what's to come within the next couple days. Starting off with Hurricane Hillary just south of Baja, California this afternoon. Current winds at 145 miles per hour. That puts us in a category four. It takes 100 and, excuse me, 157 mile per hour winds for it to be a category five. So to put that in perspective, this is a very strong storm as it tracks its way to the north. Here's the track right now. As we extend into the next couple days, we're going to continue to see this really develop. Right now to category four, it moves its way to the north just south of Baja, California still to category three. Look at the colors just on this map. As it moves to the north, it starts to lose energy. These colors indicate the sea surface temperatures. It needs warm sea surface temperatures to survive. So that mixed with the fact that it's going to hit inland, that's going to weaken it a lot. But that still gives it enough strength to at least hit Los Angeles, San Diego area around a category one as early as Sunday night into early Monday morning. It'll continue to track north. We're going to have more on this and how that will impact us here in the Bay Area potentially. For now, back over to you. All right, Jess, thanks so much. And people in Southern California are preparing for Hurricane Hillary. In San Clemente, they're pushing rocks and sand higher up on beaches, hoping to protect buildings from the storm surge. And there are also concerns about landslides in areas already dealing with erosion. San Clemente is spreading plastic over vulnerable hillsides and taking a close look at the coastal rail line below the bluffs. There's also a problem at some SoCal beaches. Not enough sand. That stretch of the coastline has been starved of sand for decades. It's now trying to survive with very little sand in the system. Um, so the efforts that we're taking to put more sand in are going to be good for that whole stretch of the coastline, but we need to do more. And further south in Mexico, people are also preparing for Hurricane Hillary. Strong waves and winds along the coast of the state of Colima. Beachside restaurants are closing up while crews block off beaches for tourists. Now to the deadly Maui wildfires. A top emergency official has resigned a day after defending his decision to not activate warning sirens as wildfires swept through the town of Lahaina. 111 people are confirmed dead. More than 1,000 are still missing. Danya Bacchus has the very latest from Maui. With crews in Lahaina only at the beginning of the long road ahead of them, residents consider what's next. A lot of us haven't even had time to, to grieve. I mean, we just slowly getting out of the survivor mode. New aerial footage shows the widespread destruction caused by the deadliest U.S. wildfire in over a century. On the ground, rescue teams are still searching for hundreds of victims, many believed to be children. A lot of the remains that we're finding are almost unrecognizable. A lot of people got caught in traffic jams um, um, in their cars. Maui's mayor says he will soon announce a new head of the emergency management agency after the former chief resigned abruptly Thursday. Herman Andaya cited health reasons for stepping down a day after he rejected criticism for not activating warning sirens as the wildfire swept into Lahaina. Do you regret not sounding the sirens? I, I do not. 19-year-old Noah Tompkinson jumped in the ocean along with his mother and younger brother to survive the flames. I'm just thinking about, you know, all the, all the people's homes and, and all, the, all the people, all the pets, I mean, that had nowhere to go. His family's home is one of the thousands destroyed. He says he can't stress enough how much help the island needs. And if you want to help the people of Maui, we have everything you need to know to be a part of this effort. Go to our website, kpix.com. 
Residents in a San Mateo neighborhood are being warned to stay inside after a mountain lion was spotted in the area. Police confirming the big cat was seen near Vanessa Drive and South Grant Street. Officers responded to the scene, but they couldn't find it. So additional resources were called in. Police are asking residents in the surrounding area to stay inside their homes. And anyone who spots the mountain lion should call authorities. Now to some other top stories we're following today. San Jose police returning to James Lick High School just a day after two students were stabbed on campus. The students are still recovering this morning and still no arrests. Meanwhile, teachers are now pushing for more protection, saying this isn't the first time this year that violence has broken out on campus. There was another assault at James Lick less than two weeks ago. The school principal is ordering gates to be locked each morning by 9.30. The man accused of shooting a San Jose police officer faces a judge today. Police say 44 year old Gabriel Carreras carried out an ambush against police during a domestic violence call on Wednesday and happened at Midtown Plaza condo complex where Carreras barricaded himself inside the home with his wife. After a four hour standoff with police, he surrendered. The injured female officer remains in stable but critical condition. A driverless cruise car crashed into a fire truck while it was responding to a call. It happened after 10 o'clock last night at Turk and Polk Streets. One person was hurt and taken to the hospital with non-severe injuries. The company says it is investigating the crash and will be in touch with city officials. Now, this all comes a week after state regulators voted to allow crews in Waymo to expand their robo-taxi services in the city. And just last weekend, there was a traffic jam involving as many as 10 driverless cars. Now a city attorney has filed a motion asking for that approval to be suspended because of safety issues. The city says if the motion is denied, it will try a different approach. It is back to school week here at CBS News Bay Area and students at Cal State East Bay are making their way to campus this morning, unloading cars and decorating their dorm rooms ahead of the new school year. Our Sean Chitness was there earlier as the move-in process has already started. Move-in day continues here at Cal State East Bay. It's an exciting time for students and their families as they get ready to go into the dorms. We're here where they are in the process of doing that right now. Another day of students looking to find their roommates and get settled in. We know hundreds were able to do that on the first day and many more will join them as this process continues into the weekend. We have the chance to talk to some students who have already moved in. They say that they are excited to be a part of the campus community and they really wanted that opportunity to live on campus and have roommates and dorms filled with other students just like them. We also talked to housing staff who say that they have around a thousand students who will be joining the campus community this year and there are still spaces available for other students who want to have that on campus housing experience. It's part of a trend that shows that more people are wanting to be part of residential life here, but the numbers are still not where they were pre pandemic. It feels so amazing. Um, I was class of 2020 back in high school, so I did not get to have most of my senior year. So now that I'm back here at college, um, I get to have, you know, everything that I didn't get in high school. Our check in is all in person. We do have some pro COVID protocols and things that we're still navigating, but residents drove up. The parents were happy. I got to talk to a lot of moms and dads. And more than three years after COVID forced students to have to stay at home, we are still seeing some of the impact from the pandemic. There are some isolation measures in place, and many of the students who will be on campus for their junior or senior year were impacted by COVID, not having a proper freshman experience here at Cal State East Bay or not having a senior year the way we typically remember it during high school.